Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for this day, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord God. Oh, Lord, we know everything is going to be all right, Lord. Our trust and our faith is in you, Lord God. So we thank you again for another day, Lord God. Thank you for our waking and rise and our health and strength as well as it is, Lord God. As we come before you, ask you to forgive us of our sins, Father. Forgive us where we've come short of your glory, Lord God. Now, Father God, again, we give you praise and glory in the precious name of your Son. Lead us and guide us in the way that you would have us to go. Bless the church today. Bless the words that are proceed from my mouth, Lord God. That it will be a blessing to your people, Lord God. And, Father, we'll always be careful to give you the glory. Now, Father, I pray that I may decrease and that you may increase. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. Come on and say amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Oh, you can do better than that. Come on and bless him today. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's, let's go right on into the word. Amen. I give honor today to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I give honor today to the First Lady of Spirit. Come on, give her a hand clap of praise. Praise God. Amen. Our church mother, praise God. Come on, put a hand on that. Amen. And to each of you in your respectful places. Amen. So we're going to go right on into the word today. We thank God for you. Amen. We're going into the book of Romans, 13th chapter, verses 11 through, 20, 11 through 14. 11 through 14. All right, let's go. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Uh -huh. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Now that was from the King James Version. I want to take you now to the Amplified Version. Amen. Romans, amen, the 13th chapter, verses 11 through 14 from the King James Amplified Bible. It reads, besides this, you know not. Well, let's do it again. Besides this, you know what a critical hour this is. Mm -hmm. How it is high time now for you to wake up out of your sleep Roused to reality for salvation, final deliverance is nearer to us now than when we first believed, adhered to, trusted in, and relied on Christ, the Messiah. The night is far gone and the day is almost here. Let us then drop fleeing away the works and deeds of darkness and put on the full armor of light. Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably becoming as in the open light of day, not in reveling, carousing, and drunkenness, not in immorality and debauchery, sensuality and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, but clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and make no provisions for indulging the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about the evil cravings of your physical nature to gratify its desires and lusts. And if I would give you a thought today, praise God, it would simply be, I didn't come to beat you up, I came to wake you up. Praise God. I didn't come to beat you up, I came 
to wake you up. So in our text this morning, the Apostle Paul tells us that the hour is here. The hour has already come. It is now time to wake up from our spiritual slumber. Amen. It is now time for us to wake up spiritually. Amen. Uh, many in the church has fallen asleep spiritually. Uh, along with the world, many in the church has conformed to the things of this world. I told y'all sometime back, I had a dream. It's been many years. I had a dream that I was preaching. And I mean, I was preaching. And everybody in the church, the church was full. But everybody in the church was asleep. They were sitting there asleep. Some was even laid out on the pews asleep. And it's times like this when the Lord put a word like this on my heart, it brings back to memories of that type of dream that I had at that particular time. Uh, people sleep in the church. In the church, but sleep. In Christ, but sleep. Uh, he goes on to say, it is high time. It is a critical time for us to be spiritually awake. Uh, Jesus himself said that no man knows the day or the hour which God has chosen for his return. Ephesians 5.14 put it like this. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now watch this. We don't know if the Lord may come today or tomorrow, or even if we will have today or tomorrow to prepare for his coming. And tomorrow is not promised to us. Right now is all that we have. And one thing I do know, it's time to wake up. I say it's time to wake up. And you see, sleep is another way of describing someone who is not very alert, someone who is not vigilant or attentive, someone who is not aware of their surroundings or the passing of time. Uh, I like to say those that are spiritually asleep in the church are sleepwalking. And they're sleepwalking not only in the church, but they're sleepwalking through life. And the Apostle Paul says, Knowing that this is a critical time. A critical time means that it's extremely important. It's a very important time. He says, it is already the hour for you to awaken from your spiritual complacency. Big word. That's it. Being complacent. Complacency is a feeling of, of pleasure and security, often while unaware of of some potential danger. In other words, sleepwalking. Uh, 1 Peter 5 and 8, the Apostle Peter said, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now watch this. We have been warned. Look at your neighbor and say, You've been warned. There's no excuse. We got the word of God. While we don't need to walk around in fear of the enemy, but we should be mindful of the enemy's mission. We should be mindful of the enemy's methods. Jesus said in the book of John, the 10th chapter, 10th verse, very familiar scripture, he says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So he lets us know that our enemy, our adversary, our opponent, the devil, he's on a mission. And his mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Perhaps one of the biggest dangers of being complacent is not accepting the truth. Ephesians 6 chapter 12 verse reminds us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickednesses in high places. In other words, our fight is not against human beings. Can I say that again? Our battle, the Apostle Paul wants us to know that our fight, our battle is not against each other, but that we all have a common adversary. You see, you may be arguing or upset or somebody may be doing something against you, but you need to know it's not so much as it is the person as it is the influence that's influencing the person to act the way they're acting. Are y'all with me today? It's against the rulers, the authorities, and the powers of this dark world. It's against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. You see, there is a spiritual realm. Uh, first of all, the Bible teaches us that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and truth. You see... In the spiritual realm, they don't sleep. You with me today? There are unseen forces uh, that hope to see us turn away from God. And they're doing all that they can to try to steer us away from God and away from his word and away from living for God. Uh, you see, Satan and his demons, and they're always plotting against us. Trying to figure you out, watching you, listening to you, trying to figure you out to come up with whatever they can to try to trip you up, to try to steer you away from God, to try to steer you away from the word of God, to try to watch this, to try to steer you away from the church. Because the church, even with all of its flaws that it may have, is still the greatest institution that God has on this earth for his believers to come to. That's why he says, do not forsake yourselves of the assembling together as the manner of some. But as much as you see the day approaching, that we come together exhorting or encouraging one another. Do I have any help this morning? You see, when we are aware of this, then and only then can we grow in Christ and be victorious. And if you want to be victorious over your enemy, you need to have a battle strategy. Uh, David said the battle is not mine, but it's the Lord's. But you got to be in Christ. Do I have any help today? Uh, you, you know, you got to have, you got to be in Christ. Watch this. And Christ need to be in you through the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then he can fight for you. Or he can give you the wisdom, uh, the tools, the knowledge of how to fight your spiritual battle. And you see, we, 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 we can't fight the devil or spiritual uh, forces with a switchblade, a 38 or 45 or 9 millimeter. That don't work. Amen. Amen. This is a spiritual war, a spiritual battle. Amen. Praise God. And we need the spirit of God on the inside of us, leading us and guiding us. Because Jesus said, I've given you power over the power of the enemy. But you see, when we're aware of this, then we can grow. Come on, somebody. And we can be victorious in the battle. You see, to be complacent, complacent is an adjective that describes a person who is self-satisfied. Especially when this person is unaware of their own deficiencies, or unaware of the dangers all around them, and they get complacent. You with me today? And the Bible says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And on, in, all, in other words, to know the devices and the schemes of the devil, come on, somebody, you got to be in the word. Uh, you need to be in church. <laughs> I wish I had some help today. Uh, maybe you know the story. Uh, we've all heard it at one time or another in our lives. Can I tell my story? You see, he was comfortable with his progression and his enormous lead over his opponent. 
And so the hare of that old rabbit thought he'd rest for a while. And while he was relaxing peacefully by the tree, he drifted off to sleep. He figured he had nothing to worry about. And that's where we got to be more careful. We got to be careful of drifting off to sleep. Uh, drifting off to sleep sometimes compiles to nodding. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And you get to nod and nod, and next thing you know, when you wake up, you done fell asleep, and you don't know how long you've been asleep unless you look at the time or whatever you was looking at on TV. Or somebody tell you, maybe even you snored or something and woke yourself up. But you was nodding. That's what happened to the old rabbit. He, he, he took him a break because he was so far out in front. Man, I got it made. He was complacent. He take me a little nap. And you know how the story goes. His slow and steady contender. His slow and steady contender. That old tortoise, turtle, who didn't initially seem to be a threat, overtook him and won the race. You got to catch that in the spirit. You see, in the life of serving God, the race is not given to the swift nor battle to the strong, but it's for the one that endures until the end. You see, we can't lose focus. We can't be sleeping on God. We can't be sleeping on this old devil. We can't be nodding off. Because if you continue to nod off or you know it, you'll drift away. Oh, I wish I had some help this morning. See, we got to keep running the race that is set before us with patience. Laying aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us or try to stop us. That's why he says, he that endureth unto the end shall be saved. You see, in this well-known fable, the hair is the epitome of complacency defined as self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by unawareness or actual dangers or deficiencies. And see, the Bible says, that knowing that this is a critical time, it is already the hour, not the day, not the week, not the month, but it's already the hour for you to awaken from your sleep. Talking about spiritual complacency. It says for our salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. Watch this. Spiritual sleep or spiritual complacency can cause someone to backslide. Bet you haven't heard that word in a while. You see backsliding is also known as falling away. In 2 Peter, the third chapter, uh, time was passing by uh, when they was talking about Jesus coming back. And, you know, and many of them, they, you know, as the years went on, Jesus hadn't returned yet. And, and listen to Peter. Uh, uh, Jesus has not come and the people are beginning to give up hope and at least any hope of it happening anytime soon or even in their lifetime. I've heard people right here in this church say that I've heard that all my life. That Jesus is coming back. Maybe you can say the same thing. But watch this. Some began to doubt that it would happen at all. And then some of them began to feel like they have been lied to or deceived. So the apostle Peter, who was with Jesus and heard Jesus speak these words and make these promises, he ran into people who were beginning to doubt that Jesus was ever going to come at all. Or that he had even made such promises. And they were beginning to abandon their faith and go back to their old ways. I think the Bible says it's like a dog returning to his vomit or a pig to the marrow to the mud. Amen. You get him out, you clean him up, wash him down, you let him go and he'll go right back to the mud. Won't he? As bad as it sounds, a dog, he'll get over there, he's sick and he'll get to hacking and everything. I hope I ain't Hurt nobody. I hope you ain't having breakfast or lunch right now. But he get to hiking, hiking and hiking, and he finally get up what's making him sick. Then he'll go right back and eat it up. <laughs> See, so first of all, you must understand this. Writes the apostle Peter. Listen to him. That in the last days, that in the last days, scoffers will come. Scoffing or either or, or make like it's a mocking. 
and they become indulging in their own lusts and saying things like, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since our ancestors died, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So Peter attempts to explain this in terms of time. God's time. Listen to this. God's time and our time is different. Listen to this. God's experience of time is different from ours. He says, do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. You see, God's time don't work like our time. Uh, but God don't need no watch or no clock to keep up with the time. Amen. So we can't time out God and time out his promises according to our time. Watch this. Second Peter 3, 8 through 11. It reads, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Think about it. I don't even know nobody to live a thousand years. I don't think the Bible got anybody recorded that lived a thousand years. I think Methuselah was about the oldest. I believe he was somewhere around 960 some odd years. But in God's timetable, compared to our timetable, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years in God's is like one day. <laughs> Ain't that something? And so we began to look at stuff like that just based on that time frame. And we oftentimes talk about Jesus uh, has been gone somewhere around 2,000 years or so. So we look at it like that. He ain't been gone but two days. I wish I had some help. If you want to look at it from the spiritual realm. And that's the way we got to base things. We can't say, well, man, he's been gone all this time. He ain't coming back. God's timetable was just like it was yesterday or the day before. Do I have any help? So in verse 9, listen. He said, the Lord is not slight concerning his promise, as some men count slightness. In other words, he's long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should we what? Come to repentance. See, God is not really being slow about his promise, but he's just being patient. He's being long-suffering. Ain't you glad? Somebody ought to be glad he didn't come a few years back because you might have got left behind. I wish I had some help. Somebody ought to be glad he's being long-suffering because if he came back today, somebody going to get left behind. Could be some of your loved ones. We'll be left behind. Do you see the point here? He says, he went on to say in verse 10, he said, but the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, there it is, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. I need to repeat that. Say the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In thee which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Watch this here. The earth and everything here it's going to burn up one day. You hear me? He says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved or burn up or destroyed, what man of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? See, see, that's where complacency comes in at. But we shouldn't be complacent because we know. Look at your neighbor. Say, we know. God has given us the word. And we shouldn't be ignorant of Satan's devices into making us think that this ain't going to happen. Some of us, look, 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 listen to me now real good. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. We should be preparing for retirement. We should be preparing for old age. You know, you, you live for the day and plan for tomorrow, you know. This don't mean just go out and, and get rid of everything you got and have a jolly old good time. But how many of you know today could be our last day? We don't know. But what if, what, what say the Lord don't come back? Watch this here. This is just theoretically speaking, okay? Say the Lord don't come back for another 50 years. 
Okay. Before we come back to earth, before the earth burn, just say it'd be another 50 years, a uh, 100 years. We can go out there. Say it'd be another 100 years before the Lord come back. Guess what? Chances are you're going to be gone. Chances are many of us ain't going to live to see another 50 years. Surely not 100 years. So guess what? Whenever you leave here, that's when the Lord came back for you. Was you awake? Are you going to be awake? Are you going to be ready? People, people, listen. We, we had one of the biggest fears that came upon this country and upon this universe in the last couple of years was the pandemic of COVID. People was dying left and right. Listen to me, y'all. And it wasn't just unbelievers dying. It wasn't unsaved people. It was saved people. Good people. Dying. But let me tell you this. Sometimes we forget that there's thousands of people die all the time from heart attacks. Thousands die from strokes. Thousands die from car wrecks. People in the hospitals get sick and die. Nursing homes, people dying. People go to sleep and don't wake up anymore. I could say it like this. I very well could be wrong, but there are a thousand ways to die. And sometimes we panic over one. And with all that panic, a lot of people, the churches were full. A lot of churches started filling up until we had to shut them down. You know, we had to shut them down, but they, were, they was, you know, wanting to go. People was all on Facebook. They were trying to hear it. They was praying. They was doing all kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Trying to see what's going on, what's happening, what's happening. Things started easing off. God started answering some prayers. And I, I, knew, I knew it wasn't the end of the world. I didn't believe it was. I believe that I was very optimistic about it, that God was going to allow, you know, uh, this too shall pass. I, I believed in that, you know, that it wasn't designed for us to not be in church. I believed in that. But then when everything kind of eased off a little bit, when the churches opened up, boy, people were talking about they couldn't wait to get back in church. Amen. Praise God. When, it, when everything started easing off a little bit, they started going right back out, doing the same things that they was doing before. They ain't had no fear of nothing else. That's what you call spiritual complacency. That's what you call spiritual sleep. And that's what the word is talking to us about this morning. It says it's time to wake up. It is time to wake up because the Lord is going to return. He's coming back. He's not slight concerning his promise. He's just being patient, long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but what? But that all should come unto repentance. God is a loving God, a caring God. His desire is for all men to be saved. Say, hell wasn't created for man. It was created for Satan and his angels. He said, but hell hath enlarged itself. He said, this is a narrow way, and few there be that find it. He said, but the road to destruction is a broad way, and many are going in there at it. Are you hearing me today? So since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, he says, what holy and godly lives should we be living? A little phrase, how you living? Uh, that's what the comedian Bernie Mike used to say, how you living? We, we need to ask that sometimes, ask ourselves that sometimes. How you living? Are you living as, as being prepared, waiting on the Lord? Are you living as a Christian that's awake, or are you in spiritual complacency? Are you just saying, well, I get it together later. I ain't ready right now. God understands, you know, I need to do this. I need to do that. Or maybe you're even to the point of thinking he ain't coming back. Maybe you're to the point of thinking, well, I'm going to live for many years. I, I get it right later on. That's how the enemy attacks you. That's how the enemy sneak up on you. You with me today? Think about it. Everything is going to burn up. Everything is going to be destroyed by fire. And this is what God is trying to forewarn us of. So that it won't take us, it won't take the believers by surprise. And that's why you hear me say just about every Sunday, I didn't come to beat you up, I came to what? Wake you up. That's why I say it. That's what preachers are supposed to be doing. All over this country, all over this universe. It's supposed to be trying to help awaken the church, awaken people. Teach them the word of God, how to live, how to be ready at all times. Hey, listen, 
Ain't nothing wrong with the excitement and the jumping and the shouting. Ain't nothing wrong with that there. But if you ain't saved, come on, somebody. You're just having a good time and on your way to hell. I wish I had. I, I hate to say it like that, but I mean, that's just the truth. Jesus said the truth to make you free. I want to have a good time on my way to heaven. Do you hear me today? I say I want to enjoy my time here on earth as I'm on my way to help. Every day ain't going to be happy, happy, jump, jump, shout, shout. Because the Bible says in this world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, he said, for I've overcome the world. So we need to lean on the promises of God, but we got to make sure this here is right. We got to get this right, and we can't be nodding off. Falling asleep on this spiritual journey and get left behind. Ain't that right? I'm about through. Listen to this. Some folks are like Jonah. And they're experiencing a, a sleep of delusion. Watch this. The storm was raging. The men were in danger. Throwing stuff overboard. Trying to get the ship right in that storm. But where was Jonah? Asleep. Are you here? The man of God. The man of God. Everybody panicking. The ship about to be being tossed and turned. All the people panicking. And the man of God is asleep. Many people today think that they can put a cover over their head and all the bad things that they're seeing around them will just go away simply because they're sleeping. By ignoring the warning, ignoring the warning is not going to cause it to just go away. Y'all with me? Come on and look at your neighbor and say, are you awake? Are you Some people like Jesus' disciples were. Uh, they were sleeping because they was tired. And, and Jesus had taken a few of his disciples with him to the Garden of Gethsemane. And he had asked them to watch while he went and prayed because he knew the danger was coming. But what did they do? They fell asleep. Jesus is telling us today, watch, be sober, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is going about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Stay woke. You need to know that. But where were they at? Jesus said, stay here and pray. You know, watch with me for a little while while I go and pray. When he come back, they sleep. Did it two or three times, didn't he? He told them to sleep on him. He said, couldn't you just stay awake for a little while? Come on, somebody. Couldn't you just stay awake for a little while? That, 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 that's a word for us today. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, catch it in the spirit. Can't you just stay awake for a little while? We ain't got forever here. Come on, we need to stay awake for a little while because Jesus is coming back. Y'all with me today? And when danger came, they stood up then wide awake. But they couldn't do nothing to help the situation. So they fell asleep. First thing Peter did then, he wanted to pull out his knife, didn't he? You see what I'm talking about? This is a spiritual battle. Are you with me today? Other people sleep the sleep of overconfidence confidence in self like like Samson did for example y'all know Samson it's sad to know that many men will leave their wives at home and 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 locate a local Delilah somewhere and begin to sleep there then they assume that they can handle it you see Samson knew that he was in danger because Delilah wanted to know the secret of his power. Watch this. But he couldn't help himself. Why? Because what? Kept falling asleep. Sleeping in the enemy's arms. And when he did awake, he said, I'll do like I have did at other times. I'll just go outside and shake myself. But Delilah had cut his hair and the Lord had departed from him. Catch that in the spirit. The Lord had departed from him. 
because of his constant complacency, falling asleep, playing with the devil. And he was surprised because he had presumed or thought that he could do just like he had been doing at other times. Now, as I mentioned earlier, some of the people were beginning to lose hope and, and they began sliding back or backsliding into their old ways and their old lifestyles before they became believers. And Paul says, wake up. It's time to wake up. For our salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone and the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the arm of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in revelings and drunkenness and debauchery and licentiousness and quarreling and jealousy. You see, when Paul calls them to lay aside the works of darkness, he is calling us to deliberately, purposefully, significantly, and most importantly, permanently put aside the works of darkness. That's why oftentimes we say, thank God for bringing me out of darkness into what? The marvelous light. What I did when I was in darkness, amen, to some degree I didn't know no better. I was trying to do what was right, but I only found myself doing the same things. But when I, whenever I got saved, when Jesus came into my life, when the light of the Holy Ghost came into my life, I could see then that I was on my way to hell. I could see then that the things I was doing was not right. The life I was living was not right. The conversations I was having was not right. The places I was going was not right. But when I was in darkness, I didn't know no better. The Bible says men love darkness rather than light because the darkness has a tendency to hide our evil deeds. That's why back when we was in the world, when we wanted to party, we didn't party at 12 o'clock in the day. We wanted to go at 12 o'clock midnight. That's when everything started jumping, 10, 11, 12, 1, and 2 o'clock in the morning. But we're not children of the night anymore. We're children of the day now. And we ought to live like children of the day. And stay awake because he said the night is far spent. Are you with me today? Somebody says, time out for playing church. Watch well, this. Why is it time out for playing church? Because the devil ain't playing. And God ain't playing either. Y'all with me today? That's why I don't tell a lot of jokes when I'm preaching. Because this ain't no joking matter. I like to laugh and joke just like the next man. But not at the expense of my salvation or your salvation. Sin ain't no joke. Come on, somebody. God ain't laughing at sin. We're not to be passive, but we'll be aggressive in our dealings with darkness. Because let's face it, if we're not aggressive with our dealings with darkness, we might fall asleep. But watch this. The devil don't. He don't fall asleep. The Bible says God neither sleeps nor slumbers. And guess what? The devil don't either. He's always trying to figure something out, a way to get you. I didn't get you today, but I'll try tomorrow. I'll try next week. And sooner or later, watch this, why it's so important, sooner or later, you are nod off, and when you wake up, he got you. Ain't that just what happened to Samson? You see what I'm getting at? Are y'all following me? Watch this. I, I, I got to go watch this. As I close this morning, watch this. Here's just a few ways to know if you're falling asleep or you're spiritually asleep or if you're becoming complacent or if you're sleepwalking. If fun things, entertainment, sleeping in on Sunday morning is a higher priority for you than serving or worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ, you're falling asleep. Either you're falling asleep or you ain't never woke up. It's one or the other. Now, what's my phrase? I didn't come to beat you up. I come to wake you up. All right, watch this. You know, you're falling asleep spiritually when prayer is no longer a priority. Wake up somebody. Lay in the bed too late to get up and pray in the morning. Got to get up and run. Ain't got time to pray. Wait till midnight to go to bed. Now you're too tired to pray. So hungry, 
You done ate half your food before you even thought about blessing. These, these, are, these are indications. Y'all with, stay with me now. Wake up. Look at the neighbor. Say, wake up. He talking to you. Don't go asleep on him. Yeah. These are just indications. Uh, this is what we call self-examination. Let's see if I'm falling asleep. Watch this here. Watch this here. Oh, Lord, help, help me, Jesus. Somebody say, help me, Jesus. Somebody say, help me, help me. Somebody say help him, Jesus. Help, help, help the preacher. Watch this here. Watch this. Watch this here. Watch this here. Watch this here. Lord knows. I, I hate to say it, but sometimes I just got to say what I feel in my spirit. Go to bed on Saturday night so when you do come to church, you don't fall asleep. Because while you sleep or dozing off, you might miss what God is trying to get to you. The devil got you sleep, and you don't miss what you needed to hear. Go to sleep early enough so when the alarm do go off the next morning, you, oh, Lord, I don't feel like getting up this morning. I'm tired. Get you some rest. Come on, somebody. I've been working all week. Go to bed at night. You'll get rest. Come on, somebody. Can I go a little further? Let me say it again. Come on. What? I didn't come to beat you up. I come to wake you up. Come on. I got to go a little further. Can I go a little further? Watch this here. You know you're spiritually asleep when you no longer have a desire to acquire more spiritual knowledge. When you no longer have a desire to acquire spiritual knowledge, such as Bible study. People, some people, they don't feel like they need Bible study. What about Sunday school? Adult Sunday school, I'm too old for that. Too tired. <laughs> oh, here you go. I'm so tired. I just can't go to... Sunday school. I, I try to make it to church. I'm tired. Go to sleep. Get you some rest. Get up. You don't be too tired to go to work. We don't start near as early as your job start. Come on, somebody. Somebody, somebody say, help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. Help him, Lord, before we get off over there. I'm just trying to help somebody. Trying to help you from spiritually falling asleep. You see, <laughs> you ever notice, you ever notice even in the animal world, even in the animal world, you don't see all them antelopes or them, what they call them, water buffaloes, what them old things, them lions and cats like to eat. You don't never look over there and see all them jokers laying down asleep. Somebody wake watching. Somebody watching. And that's the same way it is in a military, in a war. You can't go to battle in another country and, and here come 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and everybody go to sleep. Somebody got to be on the lookout, ain't it? I'm going to go somewhere with that in a minute, but I don't want to go there right now. Let's see. Come on, say it with me again. I didn't come to beat you up. I came to wake you up. Watch that. You know you're spiritual asleep. When the Holy Spirit began to speak to you, and you tell the Holy Spirit to be quiet, because your actions or your lifestyle or your deeds or your words are not pleasing in God's sight. And so when the Holy Spirit began to speak to you, to convict you, in other words, you just shake it off and keep doing it anyway. That's spiritually asleep. When the Lord is showing you what you're doing ain't right. Come on, somebody. Revealing to you that it's not right how you live. Or how you conducting yourself, and you shake it off and keep doing it anyway. Man, you in deep sleep then. You in that horror sleep. You with me? That's spiritually asleep. Watch it. You know you're spiritually asleep when you're telling yourself it's okay to act one way on Sunday and another way on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You with me today? We got to worship the Lord 724 or 24-7. Ain't that right? Not just on Sunday mornings or Sunday, but how you living on Monday? How you living on Tuesday? How you living when you ain't around church folk? <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> how you living when you're around them worldly people? How you acting? How you conducting yourself? How you carrying yourself? That's how you find out. That's, see, this is a self-examination. Come on, somebody. Come on, let me say it again. 
I didn't come to beat you up. I came to wake you up. I'm trying to wake up somebody. You with me today? Who am I preaching to today? Watch this. Now, you got to catch this in the spirit because watch this here. Some folks are light sleepers. Y'all with me? Some folks are light sleepers. You can just bump something like that and they jump back up. Uh, or they can hear a dough shell or any little thing and they wait. Or you can touch them and they say, yeah, huh? Well, and they'll be all right. But then some folks are them hard sleepers, them heavy sleepers. You can shout, holler, shake them, blow a trumpet, and they just what? Going to keep on sleeping. That's what we don't want to find ourselves in. Now, now that's, that's what you call a, a parable. I'm preaching the word. I'm teaching the word. Uh, the word is going out. God got a way of getting the word. The Holy Spirit is steady shaking us, shaking us, reminding us, talking to us, you know. And some of us are so sleep, so heavy asleep that we can't hear it or we don't want to hear it. You ever, you ever try to wake up somebody and you know they wake, but they act like they don't want to wake up. They act like they don't hear you. Y'all ever been that way? You're trying to wake them up and they act like they don't hear you. See what I'm getting at? Don't be that way. Don't be that kind of sleeping person. That's why he's saying, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, for the night is coming, what? No when no man can work. He said, don't you know I'd be about my father's business? We got to be about our father's business. Come on, somebody. I'm getting ready to leave you. See, it's time to realize for us that time is running out. And we need to be about our father's business. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. What? And all these things shall be added unto thee. So the question is, if you had more time, as we know time, is there anything that you feel like you need to do? Now, you got right now. Time is running out. For the church to do the work that God has left us to do. Time is running out for our homes. Time is running out in our families. You know, are you talking to your loved ones? Are you talking to your children? Are you, are you trying to tell them what's right and what's wrong? Are you trying to get them into Christ? You know, are, 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 we, are we trying to uh, uh, let our light so shine in this world to convict the world of sin? Or are we conforming to the world? He says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Where your mind at? What time is it? What time is it? Only God knows. What time is it? When is his arrival? He said, I come like a thief in the night. What time is it? So Apostle Paul was telling them, when you get up in the morning, if it's the Lord's will and he bless you to wake up and see another day, and he just said it somewhat like this. He said, put on the Lord Jesus. Clothe yourself. Before you, before you get out that bed, you ought to clothe yourself with Jesus. You ought to clothe yourself with God. In other words, you ought to wake up in the spirit. You ought to wake up praising God. Wake up thanking God. Wake up giving God glory. Thanking him for allowing you to see another day. Thank you for allowing him to let you be a part of this new day. I may not live all the way throughout this whole day, but thank you for right now, Lord God. And I ask in the name of Jesus to forgive me of my sins, Lord God. If there be anything that I have said or done or even thought, Lord God, that wasn't pleasing unto you, please forgive me, Lord. And I, I might get a little bit carried away with it, Lord. But I say, Lord, even if it's something I dreamed about that wasn't right, Lord God, please forgive me for that. Clean my dreams up, Lord God. Clean my mind up, Lord God. I clean my mouth up, Lord God. You see, it was Isaiah. He said when he seen the Lord in all his glory, he realized that he, he, he dwelt with a people of unclean lips. He realized that his lips was unclean. He said, help me, Lord. See, that's what, it call, that's what happens when you get into the spirit. When you get into the spiritual realm with God, when you wake up, you want to clean up. You want to get better. You want to put on the Lord Jesus. Fill me with the Holy Ghost, Lord God. Teach me how to live. Teach me how to talk, Lord God. Teach me how to treat my neighbors. Teach me how to treat my co-workers. Teach me how to treat my wife. Teach me how to treat my husband. Teach me how to treat my children. Teach me how to carry myself, how to conduct myself, how to live a life that's pleasing unto you, Lord God. 
Are y'all with me today? But you got to wake up. Because if you're still dozing off, you'll miss out. You'll miss the boat. Who wants to miss the boat? Don't nobody want to miss the boat. Don't nobody want to miss the boat. As I said earlier, I didn't come to beat you up. I come to wake you up. Come to wake up. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. You know, uh, T.D. Jakes, God bless his soul, he got that saying, he said, get ready, get ready, get ready. Well, he used to have it. I don't know if he still used it. You know what I mean? But he said, get ready, get ready, get ready. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to be getting ready. Take off the old man and put on the new man. Take off the old clothes and put on the new clothes of Christ. Clothe yourself in God. That the others will see Christ in you. That whenever they leave your presence, they'll know that you ain't like everybody else. That you are different. Are you with me today? I don't know about you, but that's where I want to be. Does anybody else want to be like that? You want to be different. You want to be in Christ. You want Christ in you. You want to be a light in this dark world. You want to be an ambassador and represent Jesus Christ. Come on. Don't, don't, make, don't make the job easy for the devil. Don't go out there and fall asleep and make it easy for him. Remember where he, where, look, look, look. I, I got to go. Okay, come on, come on. Watch this. Here. Don't make it the one when the devil comes by your house, when he comes over there to get you. Or to tempt you or to do something, uh, when he come on your job or, or, or when he come wherever you at, and he get ready to come in there and he look, he said, "Oh, I ain't worried about them. They all, I already got them. They sleep. They rest over there." I want the devil to know if he come to my house, he got a battle. He got a fight. And I thank God for the power that he's given me, the power over the power of the enemy. So when he come there, I got something to fight with. I got the Holy Ghost. So God said he will not dwell in an unclean vessel. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I love you today, and I thank God for you. And I didn't come to beat you up. I come to wake you up. Come on, we stand. We stand. We stand. Everybody stand. There may be one today. There may be somebody that have not given their lives to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to give you that opportunity. Maybe somebody has fallen asleep. Maybe, maybe you never just woke up and you want to get right. You want to get right. You don't want the devil coming by there talking about, oh, I got them. They already asleep. I ain't worrying about them. I say, it ain't no need me wasting my time on them. I already got them. I'll see you soon. That's what he's probably saying to some people. I'll see you soon. You know, I'll see you soon. Let me go get somebody else that may be nodding off. I know it's hard words, but it's real. Somebody say it's tight, but it's right. If that's you today, we want to give you that opportunity to come down. Come down and give your life to the Lord. Get your life right with the Lord. It's time to wake up. It's time to get right. Is that you today? Is that you today? All right, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you again for another day. We thank you for your word, Lord God. We thank you for your word reminding us about... Uh, sleepwalking, spiritual complacency, uh, spiritually asleep, Lord God. Uh, thank you for reminding us to always be alert and sober and, and, and always ready, Lord God, uh, looking for your appearing, Lord God. Uh, help us to not be like the uh, five foolish virgins, Lord God, that we let our oil run out, the lamps go dead, Lord God, and that when you come, Lord, we don't have what we need to go back with you, Lord God. Father God, fill my lamp, fill my vessel, Lord. Fill me, Lord God, that I'll be ready, Lord God. If there be anything, Lord God, within us, Lord God, that will prevent us from being ready, Lord, please reveal it to us, Lord God. Wake us up, Lord. Help us, Lord God. Help us to shake it off, Lord God, and wake up and be ready for your return. We don't know if it's today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. 5, 10, 20 years, or even 50 years from now. But we want to be ready, Lord. So help us today. We thank you for your word, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that your word, uh, I, I just lean on your promises, Lord God. You say your word will not return unto you void, but that it will accomplish that for where you send it, Lord God. So help me, Lord God, to be about your business. There's unfinished work that I have, Lord God, that I haven't done, that I should have already done, Lord God. Please reveal it to me, Lord God. What must I do, Lord God? What do I need to do, Lord? Who's waiting on me, Lord God, to, to hear a word 
Who's waiting on me to encourage them, Lord God? Help us to see that, Lord God. Reveal that to us all, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, Lord God. And we thank you today, Lord God. Keep your hands on us, Lord God. You told us that you would never leave us nor forsake us, but you'd be with us always, even until the end of this world. But one thing about it, you won't make us stay with you, Lord God. So, Father God, help us to stay with you, Lord God, and not backslide and not give up and quit on you, Lord God. And we love you today, and we give you glory. We give you praise in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, I say. Now, I say unto all, watch and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. We love you today. Now, listen, anybody that wants to take.